Behind me, you can see a bot I've written to play this video game. And writing one of these bots is actually easier than you might expect. In this video series, I'm going to show you how to make this. I'm Ben, and this is Learn Code by Gaming. Let's have some fun. In this tutorial series, we're going to be using Python, and I'm going to be teaching you GUI automation. GUI automation is a botting technique where you control the mouse and the keyboard with your code instead of interacting with a video game directly. We'll also be able to read the screen to see what's going on inside the game. So a project like this is the first step towards true artificial intelligence because we'll be writing software that emulates a human sitting at the computer. Before you do this tutorial, you should have a basic understanding of Python. If you're a beginner and you're brand new to Python, you'll want to do an introductory Python tutorial first before doing this project. Um, but once you get through that, this is a great beginner project to help you get more experience writing Python. This botting technique of GUI automation will work across a lot of games, and it doesn't involve any hacking because we're not accessing any forbidden information. We're just using the visuals on the screen to get information from, and then we're just sending inputs like a normal player would with keyboard and mouse. We're going to be using the PyAutoGUI library. PyAutoGUI is a great library. It's a great skill to learn even for things other than botting. It has a lot of practical applications like automated testing or working with spreadsheets and just moving data around and really tedious, repetitive tasks. PyAutoGUI is a great library to know to automate those things. And there's a really good article about PyAutoGUI that I want to share with you. Uh, so I'll link that in the description if you want to know more about it. As a disclaimer, this is a really simple botting technique. And if you use it in other video games, you're likely to get banned. So if you do get your account banned, uh, don't blame me for it. For the game we'll be botting, I've chosen Earth and Beyond. Earth Beyond is a space MMO, maybe the first ever space MMO. It came out in 2002, and it actually shut down two years after it was released. But thankfully for us, a team of enthusiasts has brought this game back from the dead. I played it in high school, and it was a lot of fun. Um, so it's great to come back to it. And I think it's a really good game for this project because it has a lot of repetitive tasks that are good for botting. And there's a good number of key bindings that will also help us make our botting a little bit easier. Earth and Beyond also has a lot of static items in its interface, and this will make it easier when we start to do image recognition. The one downside with using Earth and Beyond is it's kind of a pain to install. So in the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how to get it installed and set up. In the next video in this series, we'll start coding. OK, so let's get started by installing Earth and Beyond. Uh, for context, it's 2019, and you're going to need to be on a Windows computer because this game only runs on Windows. And we're going to start by going to net-7.org. Uh, this is the website for the game. From here, you're going to want to click on the FAQ link on the left-hand side. And then click on the Gameplay and Issues tab. And then the first item, how do I get into the game? Click that. And then these are the instructions for installing the game. And I went through these instructions to install it, and that's all you'll need to do too. Um, but there are a few gotchas, so I'll go over those. I'm on Windows 10, and these tips may or may not apply to you. Uh, but hopefully, between following these instructions and my few tips, everyone can get this game installed and running smoothly. So when I got to step number 11, uh, running the Earth and Beyond configuration, uh, it would open for me and then just close immediately even running as an administrator. Uh, so if this is happening to you, what I did to fix it is I went to the actual location of that configuration exe. Uh, for me, that was in x86 program files, EA games, Earth and Beyond, and then the ebconfig folder. And then it's this enbconfig.exe. And then what I did is I right clicked on that. I went to troubleshoot compatibility and I let this run. So when I ran this originally, it suggested that I use Windows XP mode, and I selected that, and ever since I did that, it's been opening fine for me. And when you do run your config correctly, uh, it should open like this. And when you're going through this configuration step, um, to work nicely with our bot, you're going to want to select windowed mode, and then you're going to want to set the uh, display size to something just a little bit smaller than your actual monitor display. We want the resolution just a little smaller so that we can easily get to our code, edit it, and then run it. So it's just going to make it a lot easier for you to switch between the game and the code as you're developing. And then one final note about the config step. Um, when you change your configuration here, you do need to run the performance test every time after you make a change before you save it. The second thing that tripped me up was step number 14, when it says to click the play button on the launcher. I was getting this error 
it would say server failed to respond to login attempt, and then it would just close. Yeah, so here's the launcher, and when I click this play button, that's when I would see that error. And so if you're seeing this, the way I fixed it is up here in this debug section under local IP. Um, this top IP address was selected for me, and when I just changed it to this 192 address, uh, that solved the issue. So when you click play, it should uh, launch the game. Uh, it'll have this little dialog to agree to, and then it'll open in window mode in the resolution that we selected in the config. Welcome back. You know what I need. Name and password, please. So if you haven't already, now would be a good time to pause the video and get the game installed and running. Okay, so hopefully you have the game installed now and it's running smoothly. If you are having any trouble, leave a comment below and we'll try to figure it out. Last thing I wanted to note was the key bindings that I'm using. Uh, so if you go to Options, Control. Um, I just selected the default FBS key bindings because uh, this gives you WASD control over your character. Uh, so that's what I'll be using throughout this tutorial. So at this point, if you want to play the game normally for a little bit, uh, that's a good idea to get yourself familiarized with uh, how the game works so you better understand what we're doing with our code. And this game was made quite a while ago, um, so expect it to be a little rough around the edges and don't be surprised if you encounter some bugs. Also, the questing system doesn't hold your hand very well, so it's really easy to get stuck when you're going through the missions. So don't be surprised by that. Uh, this game is run by volunteers and there are server costs associated. Uh, so it'd be a great idea to help out with that if you're having fun in the game. And so I'd encourage you to join me in making a donation if you're able to. The donation link is in the forums, but I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video too. That's all I've got for this introduction. Hopefully you're excited to start building your very first video game bot and we'll start coding in the next video. I think the bot died. <laughs> but thankfully for us, a team of enthusiasts have sent a team of enthusiasts, picked it up, and there's now a thriving community again around the game. I don't know about that, actually. I might be making that up. <laughs> cut, cut that part. <laughs>